hi um let's there we go there is my camera hi linda i'm glad you're able to get in hi wanda thank you so much for joining us um we're, we have about eight minutes before we start um so i'm sure people will be popping in um at any point feel free to um stop me if you want me to check on the chat but i will be um regularly checking that as well as our um facebook and so we'll stream that people will be able to comment on both um, and that's it i'm super excited to have you thank you glad, glad to be here i've got a question for you absolutely um i did a slideshow okay so i don't know if this is more going to be people will come in throughout that is it an hour and a half oh uh, we haven't we have an hour and a half Okay. Um, that I booked. Uh, feel okay. free to start with the slideshow if you want, and then we'll open for questions or discussion. Okay. okay. Um, that whatever helps. works for you. And, and I I'll might need you to those. let me share my screen. Yep, so I'm going to take care of that right now. Awesome. Thank you. All right. You should have the ability ability at this point. Let Do me double check. Share screen at the bottom. Yep. There we go. I've got to let me put the let me let me move some things around. So hold on a second. Okay. Before I start sharing, because I don't know how this works. I'm trying to, okay, so we've got that. Now, what I want to do is do and I'm, I'm always challenged. You should have seen me today. It was just like <laughs> working, trying to get it together. Hold on. Oh, I totally understand. Okay. So, you know, for some reason, this one came up. I don't need that slideshow. I need this slideshow. All right, let me start deleting, deleting. Okay, can you see that? Um, it says that you yes, I can. Beautiful. It just took a second yes. to uh to look Flip thing. Good. Yep. So this is this is really a very small slide show. It's That's fine. Just just enough to kind of hopefully they'll ask some questions. Yep. Um, and we still have a couple minutes uh, before yeah. we start. And I'm not gonna I'm not uh, do you want me to start right away or just wait till some folks come in? Well, we have Linda yeah. here okay. now. Okay. Um, if we don't have, uh, let's wait until maybe five after. Okay. And Linda, I'll yeah. also um, stream it on our social media as well. Gotcha. Can I ask Linda what she does? Sure. Hey, Linda. This is Wanda. Linda, can you hear us? You should be able to. Mm, maybe. Okay. She's maybe she's not on mute. No, she's not on mute. She might have stepped away because she knew we had a couple minutes. Okay, not a problem. Um, but I can tell you mm -hmm. um, that Linda does mostly um, handmade art sculptures. Okay. Um, they're nice. really beautiful. Okay, so no, that's nice. It's so funny. Um, Lately, uh, I've gotten a couple of small business owners asking me, calling to get insurance and, right. you know, trying to find out what they do and, you know, gross receipts or gross revenue, trying to get some information. And it's hard when you're just starting out because you have no idea. Right. You know, a lot of things. So definitely. Let me just see if I can. Okay, good. I'm going to have to push the button. I don't have it. I'm not there yet but a friend of mine helped me put my presentation together so i'm really mm -hmm. excited about it 
I love doing slideshows. So do you? I, I do. Oh, whew, I, I made one. It's so bad. I had to send it to her and she broke it down to 10 slides from like 20 some. And she's like, no, Wanda, too much, too much. I said, okay, more is not better. She's like, no, no. Right. So I said, oh, I did it. I did it. Is Julie, is she coming? Um, I'm sorry, Julia. Uh, she <laughs> is on vacation. Oh, gosh. So I don't her. know if she'll be coming in via yeah. Zoom or if she's just going to watch it later. I got you. No problem. Let me close my door. Just give me a second. Ah, and that's the one thing I wanted to do too. So let me grab this. Hi, Anissa. Oh, okay, I have my background, so we're good. Yep, okay, I'll write that one. Anissa just jumped in. I'm super excited. I love Anissa and I love Linda. They're both fantastic. Okay. So. <laughs> Close my email so that it doesn't. I hope, I hope this is okay to have it virtual. I mean, yeah. our, our COVID rate is going back up and it's just. Yeah, you know, no, I completely understand with the with the rate. It's being a virtual rate, again, total sense. Double ditches. Uh, I was sitting there and I was like, last month I was like, yeah, let's go. And then I was like, mm, you know, back and forth. Right. No, we have we have to make sure that you're safe and you're comfortable. And yeah. that's the most important thing. All right, we'll give it um, a, just a couple more minutes and then we will get started. Um, we have two. I think the rest will come in and out. Okay, no, that's no problem. And that's okay. I'm going to just get us ready to go on to social media, to, onto Facebook as well. Oh, okay. Um, and that's going to take a couple minutes for me to do so. Okay, you're fine. You're good. All right, so we are live on Facebook. We're having a couple other people jump in. Um, so I'll do some fun introductions and then we can get going. Okay. Um, hello everybody. For the people on Zoom land, you all know me. Uh, I'm Jennifer, I'm the director of I've Squared at the New Haven Free Public Library. For those of you in Facebook land, welcome. I am pleasantly, um, Pleasantly is not the right word, pleased. There we go, I know my tenses. Pleased to introduce Wanda today, who is going to be doing a session for us on protecting your small business. Uh, so what is small business insurance, why it's important, why you need to have it as a small business, um, things that you need to um, pay attention to when you're applying for small business insurance. Um, she is an industry expert and I am very happy to have her. If you at any point have any questions, if you are in Zoom land, feel free to put them in the chat. If you are in Facebook land, feel free to put them in the comments. And if you're watching this after we're live, you can still put questions in the comments and I will make sure that they get to Wanda. So with that, Wanda, it is all you. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. And I appreciate you um, being happy to see me today. Um, protecting your small business is very important to me. 
Um, I'm Wanda Carlson, State Farm agent here in Milford, Connecticut. Like many of you, I'm a first generation small business owner. I've been here in Milford for 18 years and I opened my agency 18 years ago in 2003. My husband works with me, he's my office manager. For the most part, it's we're a mom and pop, small in, insurance agency, um, but we have the State Farm brand, so we we're able to um, really utilize their um, the benefits of being with State Farm. Prior to me starting my own State Farm agency here in Milford, I actually was in State Farm back in 1993. I started 29 years ago there in auto claims. Then I went into life health underwriting and ultimately into human resources. So I have a lot of experience with insurance and a lot of experience with the company. Many of you may be dreaming about your business for such a long time. And some of you recently identified a gap and decided you would be the one to fill that gap. Whatever of these bits, um, Whatever of these fits your situation, I'm here to share some essential, critical to your success. During this session, I'm sharing information related to protecting your business, what that entails, why it's important and more. Let's get started. So I'm someone who understands small business. I'm gonna hit the next slide, sorry. What I'm sharing with you comes from firsthand experience. Having an idea for your small business is one tiny part of the equation. It indeed takes passion, intelligence, and plain hard work. What really is at stake are the various investments it takes to open the business. Time, talent, money. If there is only one thing you take away today, it's the knowledge that protecting your small business is one of the best investments in your business. Keep the business thriving. There are various types of protections and they won't be all be mentioned today. What I will include is the must have protection from day one. When we say asset protection, we mean those items that could be potentially wipe out your business, such as vehicles or the physical business. Of course, at the top of the list is protection for your life. There's also liability, which includes who might sue you should an incident occur on your premise or during the use of your product or service. Who's being protected? We've got vehicles, business property, and inventory, your life, all your assets. I provide you the insurance coverage now. Let's break this down into plain English. How likely is it you will have the funds to replace the items listed? Put another way, if you lost any of the above, how would your business continue? So when it comes to small businesses, people have their own vehicles that they use for the business. You want to make sure you have insurance and you want to make sure that you are categorizing it as business use. So if you do have your vehicle, um, make sure that you're letting them know that you're using it for business. Some people use their cars for business, personal business, um, and, and for pleasure. So pleasure and business, the times that are using it for work, make sure you have, you know, for business use on that car business product inventory, that's all the business property that you have. Um, and you wanna make sure that you are insuring that properly and making sure whoever is doing your business insurance policy that you have enough coverage in case of a fire or theft or any, anything that could happen. Um, your life, remember that if you should pass away, your family is going to need to have all of the business um, bills are going to need to be paid. And so if you own a building, you want to make sure that you have enough life insurance to cover that. So if they have to, they, they can sell the building to get the funds, but they'll need to have money in order to do that. And then protecting all of your assets. That's very important when it comes to business insurance. 
So one of the things that we're seeing now more than ever, did you know that small businesses are growing faster than any other industry in America? The new gig economy helped create the explosion of home-based businesses. You might think that this sort of business will be covered by your homeowner's policy. Let's talk about that. A lot of people think that they're having they can have um, on, under their homeowners, their personal homeowners policy, they are always saying, oh, well, I've got my business is covered. It's covered under my homeowners. Well, the thing about your homeowners, there's a cap on how much your uh, business property is covered. And it's usually no more than $2,500. So if you have inventory, business inventory in your home, that may not cover in case there's a fire. And also with your homeowner's policy, you do have a deductible and usually they're high deductibles like a thousand, some people have a, a half a percent or a percent. So you wanna make sure that you have a small business policy that covers your business in the home. And also you're able to, to when you're taking your product out, maybe you go, when you're going to a fair uh, this summer, you want to make sure that you have a separate policy that is your business policy. And that policy, you can get a certificate of insurance if the um, vendor, whoever is the, um, doing the event, the event planner, they might ask you for a certificate of insurance. So that's important to have. Also, any business activity is excluded from your homeowners or your renter's policy the liability protection would not be covered if someone happened to come over and you were helping them with, you know, at, as part of your business, maybe you have an office in the home, that would not be covered. The liability, say they slipped and fell in your office, that would not be covered. So you want to make sure that you have your own separate policy. So how insurance protects, so we've got the life insurance, we've got liability, and we've got business. Let me walk you through an example to create a clear picture of the importance of small business insurance protection. Um, I was talking to my husband before we even got started with the, this, this, the PowerPoint presentation, I said, well, what would you say? Because he handles the commercial policies in the office and he helps small business owners to put their policies together. And one of the things he said, you don't need it until you do. And if it is not in place, you could lose your business. You could even lose your personal wealth. So I think that is very important. I appreciate him letting us know. But let me give you an example of a situation where recently uh, there was a small business owner that had his business was on the first floor and above him they had um, they had renters uh, renters policy the renters people who were renting above so it was a situation where you had a plaza there were people tenants renting upstairs and his business was downstairs. Well, there was a fire upstairs in the uh, plaza and that fire actually, when the, the firemen came in, they went and they were extinguishing the fire, but all of the water came down on the small business below. So that gentleman's, all of his business property, the laptops, his, um, Everything that he owned, there were chairs in there that were all damaged from the water and also the product that he had. So he had to replace that. And with everything that came out, it was about $80,000 worth of product that he was able to recover from his own policy. So that was important. And that's one of the big reasons why you should have small business insurance and have that protection. Now, let's see. besides insurance, what else? Um, and you see the accountant and the lawyer here. We all want a successful business, but I'd like to go one step further and say we want a stress-free business. To ensure this, please seek guidance from a lawyer and accountant. I'm not an expert in that area, but these 
these are the people that I always recommend that you make sure you have a good accountant and a good attorney because you never know when you're going to need them. And the next slide, we've got marketing. And I put that on there, branding, promoting, attracting, capturing. This doesn't really have anything to do with insurance. If you are in marketing, you do still need to have a small business policy. But there isn't one business that can't benefit from a strong marketing strategy. There is more to it than just posting on social media. It comes down to finding the right customer for your product or service. This is another important subject that is worth exploring. And then that's, I have, if you guys have any questions, I just wanted to, not knowing what the audience was, I wanted to keep it very basic. Does anybody have any questions for me? I, I think at this point, what I'm going to ask, we've got four, four people in here. Um, if everyone wants to like one by one um, unmute yourself, tell Wanda a little bit about you and your business, um, whether you have any experience with insurance and then feel free to ask whatever questions you want. Thanks a lot. Because um, we do have about an hour that we can really go into the details if you have any questions. It's okay to ask the details. Right, thank you. Linda, tell me about your business. Jennifer told me that you have a um, you're doing some type of art crafts. Do I have to ask people to unmute? Probably. I hope I don't. Hi. Um, yes, I have. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm watching my grandkids, so it might be a little bit noisy. Um, I, so I um, make angels. Okay. Um, out of paper, and they have um, wings of buttons and different things. Okay. So I do not have insurance, but I was wondering, you know, because I do have, I put like a disclaimer in my um, packaging too to say that, you know, it's not a toy, right. you know. That, there's wires, there's buttons that can be loosened okay. and things like that. So I I was thinking maybe I do need to have insurance too, you know? Do you do, um, do you go to craft shows? I have been, I haven't, yeah, I guess I would, you would call it craft shows, go to some art festivals I sell there. And okay. then I sell from uh, like online as well. And so no one's ever asked you for a certificate of insurance to prove you have insurance when you've gone to those events? No. <laughs> yeah, because to there's they do have there is a policy out there that's for day events, and usually that is very expensive. So if they ever ask you for one, it probably would benefit you to have your own insurance. Um, the disclaimer: Did you get that from an attorney? Or no, I made it myself. Okay, I made it myself. So. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, not good, right? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, I'm in my mind, I'm thinking you might want to have someone, you know, take an hour of their time because usually it's for a free consult, for a free consultation. So I would ask someone to take a look at what you have and see if it's something you might need to, you know, have a little bit more verbiage in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's my, um, that was that's my what you do. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And, and it's one of those things because um, we every and the one thing I want to tell you all too, is sometimes it's very difficult to get like when you call to get auto insurance or home insurance, it doesn't take more than a day or two to get up. Home. But when it comes to business insurance, the things that they're looking for, and you guys might want to write this down, they're going to ask you for what is your revenue? per year. If you're a new business, that's going to be hard to figure out. Like I, I've got a young lady that does wooden signs and she's burning them. And she started, she's actually started last week, her business. She's got her LLC. She's got her tax ID number. She's all excited. She's got everything ready to go. And she's got a fair that she's going to probably, you know, how they have the art shows on the green. And she asked me, um, and I asked her, I said, well, how much money do you think you're going to get at that show? And she goes, well, if I get $300, that's going to 
at least get me, you know, a profit if I have $300. And it's like her first sale. So she's excited about that. So I, I kind of asked her, I said, so we're looking at maybe for the year and we're talking now it's May, she may have maybe 10 to $15,000. So that's what we're gonna use for her revenue or how much she's gonna earn um, for her first year. And we're gonna start there and the more money you make, the more expensive the policy is. So there's there do have limits on how much um, you can, you can um, Okay, so I've seen policies say you have a business in the home. I've seen policies as inexpensive as $427 for the year. And I've also seen where people are paying maybe $1,800 for the year, and maybe it's $70 a month. So, you know, those are some of the areas that I always let people know. The other thing we want to know on that quote is not only how much you're going to make for the year, but what how much uh, business personal belongings do you have? So I tell people, imagine taking the, if you're in a retail space, take the retail space, pick it up and flip it over. Everything that falls out, that's your personal business, your business personal property. So in those scenarios, you're looking at the, you know, the laptops, the, the computers are probably gonna be separate. But things like maybe you have sofas and chairs or whatever your customers are sitting in while you're there. And if you don't have a business that big, maybe it's, you know, a room, it might be an eight by eight. What things are in there, you know, that you have? Maybe you have products um, that you sell. Some people do Mary Kay, those types of um, places, they have supplies. So you need to know about how much you have and take pictures inside of your space. So in case if there is a fire or something where they need to find out what did you have in there, make sure you're taking photos throughout your business so you know what you have and then you can account for it. And I have a, a follow-up question to that. Mm -hmm. um, so say you have a small business where you're expecting to um, get about $10,000 a year. Yeah. At what point, when your income or your your profit is increasing, at what point do you say I need to reevaluate my policy? So you know, as an agent, and this is what I do, I like to do annual reviews with people, and especially with business, small businesses and families alike, and try to ask them how are things going, how is the business, is your business growing? Because remember, you know, she's starting out maybe at 10,000 this year, two, three years from now, she might, she might be at 25, 35, you know, she might be making quite a bit. Um, but this for right now is part time for her. So I want to know throughout the years, oh, oh, you're going full time now. Oh, you just got a retail space. We need to ensure that for you. And we just want to keep take a a snapshot every two to three years, how are things going? And that's what, you know, if you have an agent, you can do that. But if you don't have an agent and you, you know, you found an insurance company that may not be local, make sure you're having that conversation and letting them know that your business is starting to grow. And oh, by the way, I just got employees. So that's a big time. If you're starting to get employees, you're going to need to have workers' compensation. And that's very important because the state mandates that you have workers' compensation when you have an employee. So you want to make sure that you're you're having those conversations. Right. So so to parse that down, it's every year or when there is a major change, yeah. like getting employees, getting a new uh, retail space, things like that. Yes, definitely. Those are great times to have those conversations. It's just like you know having a family, having a child, you want to let your agent, your insurance agent know. So they, you know, you can keep in touch and let them know things are changing. And they do all the time. Nisa, do you want to go next? Oh, do I have to ask people to unmute? I forget that. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah just you're a little quiet, but I think we'll be okay. I'm in the library. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm working on a uh, greeting card business. Okay. Uh, so this is out of my home. I think 
my concern is probably inventory. And uh, I use graphic designers to design the products for me, but I'm using a laptop. So, um, so you know, th those are kind of the main pieces that I'm very, very early stages. So haven't made any sales or anything like that. Gotcha. So when did you start? Do you have your um, business, like do you have your tax ID and everything set up yeah, and everything? Yes. Tax, tax ID, the LLC is just about to push the button. Okay. Business plans uh, in development. Okay, so that's good. So you're, you're, you're getting started. One of the things you have to be, so as a greet, when doing greeting cards, are you outsourcing the graphic design? Yes, I'm hiring a, uh, I'm, I'm hiring a graphic designer to make the designs for me. Oh, okay. And I'm getting them printed, um, you know, locally. Okay. So with the graphic designer, ask them, do they have business insurance? Um, because they, you know, you're, you're utilizing what they're giving to you. And you're going to have to probably look, you definitely need to look for um, business insurance for your um, greeting cards um, because you've got a lot of supplies. And in, in, are you out of your home or did you find a safe? It's out of my home. Okay. I'll be selling mostly online and maybe at occasionally a fair or something like that. Gotcha. And that's and one of the things about having your business in the home you get a discount through the insurance company for having business and residence. So that's one thing that's really nice to, to know um, that you do, you will get a discount for being out of your home. But the nice thing about having your own separate policy is like when you do go to those fairs and they ask for the certificate of insurance, you'll have it ready to go. And it doesn't take that long. I think, um, we just uh, the company just started where you can go online and just get your you know get your own certificate of insurance now. In the old days, you had to contact the agent's office. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, sharing what you're doing. Good luck with that. Sounds great. So we got Pi. Is it Pi? Hi, um, P or T. Do either of you want to go next? I can go. Okay. Hey there, everyone. Bye. So I make wearable art uh, okay. from the form of clothing and accessories for men, women, and children. Mm -hmm. I started by doing custom pieces, so one at a time. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in the process of scaling up to do ready to wear. Okay. So meaning uh, instead of just one at a time producing maybe limited collections of 10 or 20 okay. and that's putting those in stores selling them on my website stuff like that are you working from home i have my design studio that's where i do most of my work okay so does your um landlord require you have to have um business insurance i have renters insurance that's the only requirement renters insurance so let's talk yeah. about that do you live in this in, in the, the design studio? Do you live there? No, just work. Okay. So that's that's the thing that can be tricky there because if you're not living there, renter's insurance is for someone who actually physically lives in the location. If mm. something were to happen, even though the landlord, that's all he wants, that's probably not the right insurance that he required you to have. Do you have, are there other people that live in that building? No, these are all just, just artist studios. Okay, so it's art studios, plural, yep. like other people have their business in there? Yes. Okay, yeah. I would say that you definitely need to have a business policy. And I think that will, and it does, it's, and it has liability attached to it. So. If something happens, say in your unit, there's a fire and it was an accident, he would have he would be protected. He'd actually probably be more protected than what you've got given giving him under a venture's policy. So I think that might be something where, um, like I said, the landlord just thought, well, you know, he's he's renting to you. He's thinking in his mind, well, then I need renter's insurance. 
but that's not the that's not what it should be. It should be a, a business policy. A bit, a, you should have a commercial liability policy in case okay. something happens. But I would definitely do some research on that. But I I don't feel like he's at, he's he's asking for the right um, type of insurance. That's good to know. Yeah. Then you need to protect yourself. You want to protect your business and mm -hmm. yourself. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Gene. Thank you. Appreciate the question. And Linda, did you have a question? You unmuted yourself, so I just want to make sure. Oh, I know. I'm not even sure what I'm doing. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's no. totally okay. I'm so not <laughs> I'm on my phone because I couldn't get my computer up, so it's a little weird for me. Oh, that's totally. I'm sorry. Weird. I will mute myself again. Thank you. Oh, not not a not a big deal. <laughs> so um, I have this. So Wanda, I guess my my next question is with business insurance. Obviously, there's different types. Yeah. Would yeah. it obviously if you go to some sort of agent, they can walk you through those different types. Yeah. If you weren't going to an agent, would right. you be would whoever's looking for insurance be able to figure that out themselves or would like an online thing help them with it so it makes more sense to go to an agent? Yeah, I was going to say I have cuz there's certain insurance so I have um I was look thinking about small businesses and how difficult it can be to get insurance. Let's go back to what people are doing. I have situations where someone will tell me, I have, say I have my art studio, inside my art studio, I'm renting um, space for people to come in and do artwork. And then we have maybe wine and some other things that we're doing for sipping, you know, art things. And, and we're also doing something else where we have children coming into the business. So there's all, some people have businesses that are not just clear. It's not, I'm doing this and that's all I'm doing. Some people will try to branch out to make money in different areas. And when they do that, it becomes a question of, well, what's the majority of your business? How are you running this business? Um, you can go online and try to get a quote for yourself. But I think what happens if you don't have someone that has the experience to ask the questions, you may get it yourself in a situation where you're not being insured properly. So it's not, it's not clear cut. I actually have a business assessment that I do and I ask people all of these questions. So it's a questionnaire that I have so that I can find out whether, how are we gonna be able to insure this business? Um, yeah, it's not, it, unfortunately, business, small business is not as easy as, you know, it's not cut and dry. Um, because some people, like the one lady I was saying that's doing the wood burning, she also just decided to do some tumblers where there's drinking uh, mugs with some resin and she's doing all these nice things. But we had to put, well, what part of your business, what's the majority of your business going to be? So that's the other part of it. So I don't, it, it's not easy as going to Google. I mean, I think you should research and look into the different, you know, liability things that are important in a, in a business policy is um, the liability portion of it. You can get a million, two million for the aggregates, um, or you can have a smaller amount, but you want to have as much liability as you can possibly get, whatever you can afford. Um, there's also, um, what else is done that policy? Like I said, the business personal property, you need to have to know how much you have. And, and that Jen, as we were talking, if you, as you're building your business, you're gonna need to add, get more of that for sure. And you see you had your hand up? Yes, I had my hand up, thank you. Um, really appreciate what you're talking about, Ms. Carlson. I was wondering if you could just be a little bit more specific uh, with Pia, T, and Linda, and just tell us what we should be looking for for our businesses. I get that we should have business insurance, but maybe you could be a little bit more specific for what we should look out for when we're ready to, to push the button. Yep. So uh, let's go back. Anissa, I have got T, 
did I, oh, T I spoke to. For some reason, their buttons just flipped over. I don't know what Pi does. Pia. Pia. Pia, what do you do? She might be off. So, so, um, Anissa, you're doing, hold on, I want to make He does sure. greeting card, the greeting, greeting cards. cards. So the greeting cards, you got to remember, so you're, you're outsourcing the work for the graphic designer and what you want to be careful with um, when you have someone else doing part of the work. Um, I'll give you an example. I had a, a friend who's a marketer and she went online and she got a picture that she paid for. And the thing about this picture that she paid for, they, behind the scenes, somehow they were selling this picture, but they didn't have the rights to, to the selling of this picture. So my friend who's a marketer, she had, she had her own business insurance. They sued her for, I think it was 20 or $30,000. And she, that's not something she had, you know, on her account that she was going to buy. So she had to put in a claim under her, her personal, her small business policy, not her personal, but her small business policy. And by having that policy, State Farm took, and they have an attorney, and they actually had to settle with that for just a picture. They had to settle. So that liability, had she not had that liability, she would have had it to come out of her pocket, her own personal pocket of twenty to thirty thousand dollars. So that's why you want to have insurance, um, and, and especially because you just don't know what people will do. And you know, you're doing greeting cards. Someone might try to say, "Well, you you must have taken that from us, or you give got in it some other way." Um, and you never know. Um, think those things can happen. With T, T, you're gonna need to have your own small business policy because you're making, you're designing these clothes and what other things are you doing? Clothes, accessories, those types of things. You're, it's your product, you're creating something. So you definitely need to have a policy that protects you. Maybe, you know, I don't know, you, you wanna make sure that you have um, liability. If you're having people come into this to the retail space, maybe someone wants to try on some clothes. You definitely want to have um, a small business policy. So in case maybe they slipped and they fall and they try to say, "Oh, that was your fault." You know, maybe the, you had a rug on the floor and they tripped over it. You can have you have liability that's available for you. And there's also medical payments in that policy too. So those are things you don't think about um, because it's not something that we talk about. So my next question, Wanda, is so now people are ready to go buy insurance. What yeah. are some green flags and red flags when they're looking for insurance agents? Like what is some things that they should look for? What are some right. things that if they see they should run away? Well, the, the thing that's the toughest is that a lot of times we wait until we need the insurance instead of getting the insurance up front and understanding that it's very important to have it. So you've got to understand it's going to take, when it comes to small business, they're going to ask a lot of questions and you only have, and you want to make sure you give them maybe two to three weeks to get back to you. <coughs> Excuse me. So I always say, you know, be patient, make sure you, you know, call them, make sure they're still working on your quote so that they can make sure that they can find the best quote for you. Um, and they're not just rushing. I, I have, I can do a quote maybe in a day or two, but sometimes I need to have more information about your business and you as a person. What are you doing? So make sure that they're taking some time with you to understand what your business is all about. That's important. Red flag is, oh yeah, I can, you know, they don't even ask you any questions about how much your revenue is or don't ask anything and they just give you a quote. You know, take, if you need, if you get a quote and you need it, have any questions, you guys can definitely feel free to reach out to me and I'll see if I can help you with that as well. So you have a resource here. 
by all means, give me a call. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my next question is, I know that like for small businesses, especially just starting out, yeah. there's not a lot of um, expendable revenue. This is true. So true. the fear is, I like, well, or the logic is I'm going to wait on this until I have a little bit of money coming in. Is it, does it make sense that it's okay, I can only afford this much, get that much insurance, or wait yeah. until it might not work like that and that's the hard part right there because you know as what i always tell people is get the insurance you're going to have to ask people you're going to have to increase your how much you are expecting on that product that you're selling to someone so say you were thinking it's going to be a dollar you know five dollars for something add the insurance in as you're going because you've got the insurance it's like i, I guess it's like um john said earlier and let me look at the note that he said um and it was it was not really funny because it's real um you don't need it until you do and if it is not in place you're gonna you're gonna lose you're gonna lose possibly your business you're gonna possibly lose your own personal wealth it's not worth it not to have it and so many people, I can tell you, honestly, there's a lot of business owners that don't have business insurance. And if something like a catastrophe happens, what are they going to do? You know, if this is everything you're putting into it, all the money, the hard work, everything. Actually, this happened to someone up in, I think it was Middletown. This gentleman had put all of his money into this business and there was a fire and it wiped him out. He didn't have business insurance. So none of that was covered. And everyone was like, you know, how can we help them? And he's like, I'm devastated. That was my whole livelihood. I'm, I can't do this anymore. So he, he stopped and he had been in business for 20, 30 years. So it's a long, that lot. And, and again, people always say, I can wait for that. That's something that I'll do later. And like you said, you can start off with nothing, but as your business starts to grow, gotta make sure you protect yourself and protect your business. Um, are there any sorts of like discounts or things that um, people should be aware of when they're going in to um, get yeah. business insurance? It, it's not like your personal. It's not like the bundle and, you know, okay. like the auto and a home. It doesn't work like that. Um, the things that you want to think of is as you're building your assets and you're getting, so say you, you start off your renting, and then you decide, oh, you know what? I want to buy that building. You've got to make sure that you have the, the um, building insurance, make sure that it is for a business, make sure that these things are being categorized properly because you don't want to, you know, make it a, a home if it's truly a rental property. So you want to do that. Um, so yeah, if that helps. I think it does. Um, Anisa, go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Just another one. Uh, let's say that you have multiple LLCs. Yes. What are your, your insurance options? Can you group them? Uh, what's, what, what's, what's available? Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm dealing with a gentleman trying to do that right now. And I'm like, you need to, first of all, he has one LLC with multiple businesses underneath it, which you should not do. So if you have multiple LLCs, you're going to have multiple policies just to separate them. Because if you get sued, if you have everything under one, uh, one umbrella, let's say, say I put all of my businesses in one LLC and there's a claim that happens, it's, it's hard for the insurance company to figure out, well, what part of the business, how is this working? So I advised him to take his now, his one LLC and break it out. Now, what you're talking about is you definitely, if you have separate LLCs and they're doing separate things, you need to have separate insurance for each of them. Does that answer your question, Anissa? Thank you so much. Yeah, I would definitely. Because I, it's like my kids, they had, um, my father left them with land which is just land down in North Carolina. And they also, he also left them with a house that his father built him. So he, they had to create two LLCs. 
So instead, there's two different locations, two different types of business. So you want to make sure you separate and have the insurance separated. And I guess you, you probably answered this and I just don't understand. Um, okay. So you have um, you have a vehicle that you're using for your business. You have car insurance that's for that vehicle specifically. Right. And then you have business insurance with that that would potentially cover the vehicle as well. So like, no, not at all. So okay. even if you're using it for your business. So here's the thing with that. You want to make sure you let your agent know because using it what happens is if you know like from the time you maybe on the weekends you're using it personally and during the week you're using it for business then it would be business use so that's just a separate you know so if it's a regular car you would tell let them know to that's your business vehicle this is for business use and a lot of people will have you you can have so many cars that are under the business so if it's if it's definitely like your LLC, make sure that you let your agent, your insurance agent know that it's for business use so that they have it categorized properly. And when it comes to say some people are doing Uber and Lyft, make sure you let your insurance company know that you're doing that because there's another endorsement that protects you. So that's, those are a lot of people are doing that now. And it's, you know, even if it's at nighttime and they're doing something during the day, different business, make sure the insurance company knows so that you have the proper endorsement. Let your car insurance company know. Yes, car insurance company. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That, that makes sense. Does anybody else have any other questions? We have about, I don't know, a half hour left of time that we booked. That does not mean that we have to take the entire time. Um, but we have the time now to ask anyone if they have any other questions um, about small business insurance and getting started. Yes, Anissa, you don't have to keep raising your hand. Just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your questions. I'm just trying to be respectful. I know. Uh, so what, what kind of questions do you ask when you're uh, starting out, uh, when you're getting a new client? I'm just curious what kind of things I should be prepared to answer. That is so. That is a good question, and of course, I would have. I I have a what I do, and the nice thing about me working with State Farm is I have a, a relationship with my um, business under underwriter. He's a field underwriter, and what happens is if I tell him that I have a business, the one thing he'll start with is, "Okay, Rhonda, I need to know does that person have a website." So they're going to look at, if you have a website, that's one thing I'll need to know because the underwriter is going to want to look and see what you're doing. The other questions that he starts with is, you know, how long have you been in business? And that, and you know what, to, that does give you a discount. Then for the longer you're with, that you can show proof that you've been insured, that gives you a discount too. So three or more years, that becomes a factor in a discount. Um, are you working in at home? What address are you using uh, retail space? Are you working from home? We need to know that. That working from home, the residence, you get a discount for that. Um, the other thing is um, he'll ask how much um, revenue do you are you making? What's your revenue, gross revenue? The other question will be how much do you have for your business personal property? Another question is, I'm trying to think of anything else. I'll probably be missing something. But the nice thing I like about working, and that's another thing that you'll find with and the reason that the um, if you call for small business insurance, it takes so long is because they do, we, we have to talk to the field underwriter to find out first if your business qualifies. The other question we'll ask is, how close are you to Long Island Sound? So if you're near the ocean, you may or may not be insurable with some companies. So that can create um, a, another snag on trying to get insurance. Um, what other things can I think of? Those are just like the major things that they'll ask. Um, they'll ask how many employees do you have? If you have employees, they'll talk about workers' compensation. Um, they'll ask you, do you have life insurance? 
they'll ask if you have disability insurance. And, the, and I'll tell you a story about a lady that um, did not have disability insurance. Her, she was a psych, psychotherapist and she had built over 20, 25 years, she built up a, a clientele. And I talked to her, she called me and she said, one, I'm closing the business. And I said, well, what, what's going on? She said, well, I, I got sick and I, I got disabled and I wasn't able to work. And my clientele had to go to different psychotherapists. And then when I came back to get back to work, nobody, you know, I lost all my clientele because they needed, they needed me. So she had to shut her business down. So one of the things I tell people is take, check out short-term disability. Also look at life insurance. If you have, if you've got a partnership, you might want to have, you know, life insurance for that key person, or you might want to have a buy-sell agreement. That's very important when it comes to life insurance, having, if you have multiple partners in the business that all of you are covering each other. Um, and some other things you might want to consider, um, I was just thinking, so workers comp is important. There is a, a bigger, a, a million dollar commercial liability umbrella policy that you might need as the business gets bigger. And if you get more assets, you might want to consider that. That's a big um, thing of, of small business insurance that we do as well. Thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, well, let me just double check Facebook, make sure that there's no questions there. Okay. It doesn't look like there are any questions in Facebook land. Okay. Um, if you are watching this later on Facebook, feel free to put um, questions in the comments section. We do double check um, pretty regularly. And I'm also going to, Wanda, if it's okay with you, put your email address in, or um, not your email address, your website, I'm sorry, in the, that comments as well, so okay. that people can contact you directly if that's okay with you. That is fine. I appreciate it. WandaCarlson.com. Oh. Beautiful. All right. All righty. Well, if nobody else has any other questions, we are going to break for the evening. Um, just a reminder to those participating, as well as everybody watching on Facebook land, our Make to Sell um, Summer Showcase will be happening on June 4th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the cafe at Ives Main Library. So we are going to have a number of small businesses from our make to sell cohort coming to sell their products. Um, it's their first big maker fair or small, really. It's their first maker fair um, that we're doing for these small businesses. And we would love to have you join us. Um, again, Ives Main Library is going to be on a Saturday from 11 to 4. Um, all are welcome. And thank you to Wanda for doing this lovely session for us. I am super excited. I learned a lot. Um, I don't have a small business of my own, so I don't have small business insurance, but I learned a lot and I think it was extremely useful. Um, everybody on Zoom, you have Wanda's information. Um, I can also email it to you separately. Um, Wanda, would you mind when you're done sending me the slides and I can send them out to people? Is that okay? Sure. No, that would be great. great. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Thank you, everybody. You have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.